I don't even know how I got into rap movies. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Aaliyah Paranath and I hope you're having an amazing day today. We are gonna get straight into it. So I have been receiving a lot of questions about Rotman and what it's like being a Rotman Commerce student. So I thought I would make a series out of it and why not start with where I'll begin, the application process. So before we get started, please make sure to like and subscribe. I really appreciate the love and support that you guys have been giving me. And without further ado, let's get started. The first foundation that I want to set in place is that grades are not everything. They are not as important as you think they are. In fact, they weigh just as importantly as extracurriculars and volunteering and experience outside an academic setting. When it comes to the application process for Rotman, I would categorize as grades being worth 35% volunteering experience or extracurriculars, I would weigh as 35% as well, and your supplementary application would be worth 30%. So when you apply for Rotman Commerce, you have to do it through a platform which is called UAC, which is the Ontario University Application Center. And when you apply, you apply as either a 101 applicant or a 105 applicant. So I applied through what's called a 101 applicant. So when you are applying for Rotman, there are specific requirements that you have to meet or in the process of achieving when you are applying. Or I can only speak as a 101 applicant. So there are two courses in particular that the Rotman admissions look at, which is ENG for you. That is an English course and then a MCV for you course, which is math in particular calculus and vectors. When I applied, you needed a final average of 75 or higher um, in order to apply for Rotman. But I looked at the website recently and it actually just said you needed a minimum average of mid to high 80s. When we say final average, this means your top five best grades. Keep in mind that in your final average, two of them must include ENG for you, which is the English course, and MCV for you, which is the math, calculus, and vectors. If they do not have this mark as of yet, so let's just say you're just in the beginning of taking that course and you don't have um, an average as of yet, they look at your grade 11 course marks for English or for math, which is why you hear from older students or you hear from teachers that going into grade 11 is very important because if they do not have those grade 12 marks, they will just look at those grade 11 marks. Okay, so next I want to talk about my grades that I went into when applying to Rotman. I do want to note that although they say a minimum of mid to high 80s, do keep in mind that Rotman Commerce is a very competitive program to be accepted into. You are competing with thousands of different applicants and so though the Rotman website says mid to high 80s are expected, you can you are competing with essentially high 90 averages with your fellow peers. And so when I was applying for Rotman, my final average was a 95%. Keep in mind that I graduated in the class of 2021. And so my uh, academic year was purely online due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So when it came to volunteering and extracurricular activities, um, I was a part of a program in my high school, which is called the Leadership Pathways Program. And you needed certain requirements in order to graduate with that, with that special certificate. And so one of the requirements being to complete 100 hours of community service, in addition to 25 of them being leadership uh, hours. So certain being involved in your community and initiatives that you would take, things like that. I collected these hour hours over a course of three years. With this experience in mind, I was able to utilize that in my application process. I also have previous jobs experience working at concessions with the movie theater and also um, being a legal assistant at a law firm and so I was able to use this as well. So when it came to the supplementary application form, I remember two out of three questions that I was given. One thing that I would recommend when completing the supplementary application form is doing research on it before you do it. Don't just jump into it because there are so many versions of the supplementary application. They change over time in the years. So I remember two out of three 
of the questions that I was given. Two of them are written and one of them is what's called like an interview style question. You are given a question and you have a minute to hear the question and rehearse it and kind of think of how you want to execute your response and then you have a minute to present. So one of the questions that I was given was to basically summarize an, either an article or something in the news that I've recently read or watched and how it relates to the field of business. I believe I talked about the automobile industry, you know, due to a lack of resources and a lack of like metals and stuff like that, and how it created a decrease in GDP due to the fact that there was a decrease in exports, but an increase in imports, which causes GDP to decrease. The second question that I was given, this one was my video interview question. The reason why I remember this question so well is because it is open to interpretation. The question that I was given is, how would you say that cyberbullying and mental health plays a role into the growth of uh, social media? And so I thought this was a perfect question because I had recently done a research paper about this. I was able to answer it like this. I basically said that, um, you know, there is a relation between the growth of social media over the course of 10 years in addition to the number of users. And if you look at it statistically, you can see that younger uh, age groups are becoming more involved to social media. And you can see that over the course of time, there is an increase in cyberbullying. And when younger kids are being exposed to this culture and this environment on an online platform, this really affects their mental health, which is why there is a relation between um, a younger audience and cyberbullying and mental health. And I, I've ended it off with if we're able to put restrictions in place to kind of prevent this from happening, we can see that that relation can slowly decrease the effects of cyberbullying. A big question that I get is, you know, what happens if I mess up on the supplementary application portion? More specifically, what happens with that video uh, interview aspect of it? They do understand that applying for a university, it's like, especially Robin, is very scary. So they're not going to say, you know, they got this answer wrong or they're completely kicked out. They will look at your other responses in the written aspect and evaluate from there. For one of my answers, it wasn't as strong because I only had probably about five minutes to write it. And I wasn't as strong, but I was able to excel in the verbal aspect of the interview portion. Uh, some people may not have felt very confident in the interview portion but excels well in the written portion so that's why they give you that balance of being able to respond verbally and also being able to write out a response towards their questions because they want to see how you're able to get your ideas out effectively and efficiently given the time crunch that you're on i believe the supplementary application is a 30 minute process most of the time is dedicated towards body or your work but um i would suggest when you are applying for just university in general or applying for post-secondary um make sure to apply in advance you know don't wait until that last day i definitely made sure to prep a week a week to two weeks in advance before completing the supplementary application you know i didn't go into it blind i wanted to be prepared and the re and it's also good to complete it early because there is a chance you could get one of the earlier admissions i'm not saying early admission but they do give off rounds of admission so i think it's like once or twice a month so you could be one of the earlier months as opposed to being one of the last rounds before you have to accept their offer i remember for my application process when i had to accept my offer i had until june 1st of 2021 to accept my offer uh keep in mind that just because other people get admitted early doesn't mean you are going to get declined that was completely not the case and i think that is completely false because i personally was one of the last rounds of admission i got my acceptance letter one week before I had to accept my offer, while another one of my friends got theirs in February. So don't feel too discouraged if you know you're waiting a long time because that it it they're just they get so many um, applicants a year. They want to make sure they go through each person's application form 
and make sure they're giving it their all as opposed to, you know, just going through it randomly and not giving their 100%. Okay, so I think that brings me to the end of this video. Um, hopefully this was helpful towards any incoming students looking to apply for Rotman. I hope that this video makes the application process a bit easier for you. But in the meantime, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe. If you have any other Rotman um topics that you would like me to cover please let me know i would love to hear them down below in the comments but in the meantime i will see you guys in the next video take care and stay safe do you want this in the vlog i do want this in the vlog all right we're gonna make sure the it's vlog. in the vlog oh my God, I all right